Thank you, Jesus. All right, so quickly, on the 31st of December, we are resetting the whole thing. Is someone hearing me here? It's our reset service on the 31st of December. It's a service of praise, of prayer, power, and prophecy, where we receive the direction from our man of God as to what God is telling us, you know, for the year, for the year that is coming. So I want you to get ready. It's going to be a powerful time in God's presence as we get ready for reset. And for that, please, we want to indulge that everybody pack at Coliseum because the entire place here is going to be used, you know, um, for the service. Even our car park is going to be used for the overflow. And um, also, we, we are going to have overflow at the Coliseum at the same time. We are going to be parking at the Coliseum. So it is important that everybody park at the Coliseum when you're coming. Coliseum is just um, three buildings away um, from here. And please kindly come early so as to be able to get the front seat. This whole place will be jam-packed. And we're expecting that it's going to be a time of intense prophetic atmosphere and a time where, you know, we receive the word of the Lord. Are you ready for the word this morning? All right, let's quickly open our Bibles to the book of Joel chapter 1. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll be taking briefly here um, the transforming power of joy. The transforming power of joy. It's such a great opportunity to be standing here in, at the Lekki campus. Um, it's been a while because we're always at the Aja campus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God is doing great and mighty things through our workforce at the Aja campus. And I can't wait to be with them this morning. So please, if you are around that area, that is your church. Amen. I know you are here this morning, but that is your church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And great. Um, please help me appreciate my father and the Lord, Pastor Balaji and Pastor Momido, for the great and mighty work. And all the pastors in the house, I salute us. All right, Joel chapter 1, verse 12. Scripture says, The vine has dried up, and the fig tree has withered, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. He said, All the trees of the field are withered, and there is a reason for that. It says, surely joy as we drew away, you know, from the sons of men. The vine has dried up, the fig tree has weeded, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree weeded, the apple tree weeded. Every of the trees of the field are weeded. And the reason why is because surely of a certainty, joy as we drew away from the sons of men. It is very important. Um, I mean, the church of God um, is the pillar and the ground of truth. Uh, scripture says that I, I ought to come to you to tell you how to conduct yourself in the church of the living God for this, um, Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, which is the pillar and ground of truth. The church of God is the pillar of truth. The church of God is the ground of truth. You can never find any outside the church. The way the church is structured is the fact that whatsoever truth God wants to pass across in a dispensation or in a locality or in a vicinity, those truths always come via the church. So it is very important to know that the church is not a place where you gather information. The church is a place where you learn the truth of God's word. The church is a place where you learn the mystery of God's word and it is the mystery of God's word that you know that dictates the predictive patterns of success. Is someone hearing me here? Which means that when you understand the mysteries of God, the truth of God, you can predict the outcome of any situation. Is someone hearing me here? Truth makes the result predictable. Is someone hearing me here? Truth makes result predictable. For example, the law of graffiti says that whatever goes up, you know, in, in, in the layman term, definitely will come down. That's the truth. And the, the result of anybody that jumps up is the fact that we expect you, amen, to come down very fast. Why? Because you have to obey that truth. And it is the same with the scripture. Scripture says that the church of God is the ground of truth. And when you know truth, the outcome is predictable. Is someone hearing me here? 
Scripture says uh, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Which means that the end result of coming to term or coming to the knowledge of the truth is the fact that you will be free. Is someone hearing me here? Uh, scripture says that, uh, 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 he said, he that look continually into the law of liberty, that continual in it, which means you must continue in this and is a doer. Is someone hearing me here? A doer of this particular law of liberty, he says, such shall be blessed. Is someone hearing me here? Such a, so the church of God is the pillar and the ground of truth. And one of the truths that we must, uh, we must come to imbibe is what we are about to discuss this morning. It sounds, uh, it's, so, it's so usual, it's so common, but it's very powerful. It's on here. It's very powerful. Hallelujah. This truth is very powerful. Tell someone this truth is very powerful. So the scripture says that the vine weeders, the promethorate weeders, the reason for all this thing is because there is a lack of joy. Now listen to me. Joy is not the same thing as happiness. We live in a world where joy is not natural to a soul. Joy is not the, uh, uh, is not the usual outcome of anybody's desire. The things that happens around us uh, does not call for joy. Did you get what I'm saying here? It is not the response of any soul. The response of any soul is to actually focus on the worries. Focus on the things that are wrong. Scripture says in this world we have many tribulations. But a be of good cheers. So what Jesus was saying was the fact that there are certain things that are constant is tribulation. But there are certain things that are variable is the fact that you will be of good cheers. Which means it's a commandment from the Lord to be of good cheers. Joy does not come naturally. Men naturally will not give you joy. Situations naturally will not give you joy. The things that we encounter every day naturally will not give us joy. But scripture says be of good cheers. You have to intentionally create joy inside of you. Did you get what I'm saying here? Happiness is as a result of happenstance. Joy is a conscious effort of a believer to seek down within the spirit that God is faithful. Did you get what I'm saying here? Happiness is as a result of happenstance. The fact that things happen good and you are happy. The fact that you have your first $1 million, you are happy. The fact that you pray in tongues, you are happy. It's as a result of the things that surround you. But joy is a conscious effort. A conscious state of internal, you know, expression of God's goodness in whatsoever situations of life. In whatsoever situations of life that God is faithful. (laughs) <laughs> that is what joy is. Joy is not what you wake up in the morning and you do. That because when you wake up, all you just see is paradise. You know, you know what I'm saying? You just, see, you just see birds flying around. You know, you see the lion coming to your doorstep and greeting you good morning. Hallelujah. And by the time you check your account, all of a sudden, you know, the coin just multiplied from, from $5 to, to $1 million. Praise the Lord. That, that, is, not, that is not joy. Joy is the fact that even at the presence of obstruction and hurt, you decide within your soul that God is faithful in this situation. (laughs) Joy must not be left to chance. If you leave your joyous moment of the, the, the joy of your life to chance, then that chance will not come. Joy must not be left to chance. Joy must not be left to the the situations around you. Did you get what I'm saying here? Joy must not be left to whether God did it or he didn't do it. (laughs) You know, in the scriptures, not all the dead in the scripture that Jesus rose. You understand? Because I've met people that say God is not faithful. I'm not coming to church again. You know, this, this, and this. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. This person will not die. 
I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And eventually the person died. What, 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 what am I to be grateful for? What is there to express joy? Listen to me. You have to understand the concept and the perspective of, the perspective of God when it comes to the dealings that happens on earth. You cannot be counting time for somebody that is time. Did you get what I'm saying here? You cannot be dictating life to someone that is life himself. Because in the perspective of God, that is a transition. That was why Paul said that he said, if I am out of here, it's better. If I am here, it's better. But because of you, I will stay here. Because in the perspective of the kingdom, someone was... Well, that's why scripture says, I write to you to, uh, I write to you because of those who have slept in the Lord. Not who died. Did you get what I'm saying here? So, in the perspective of God, a soul has come home. In your perspective, someone died. So, your joy cannot be left whether somebody died or somebody raised. Because Jesus didn't raise everybody. If, as a matter of fact, one day, some, somebody told Jesus that... I want to quickly go and bury my dead. And I come. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, hey, yeah, bring the person. Let me raise him up. Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. <laughs> that, that's the same Jesus that they brought a dead girl to. And Jesus wrote the dead girl. But another time, Jesus said, let the... Do you know how many people that died during Jesus' earthly ministry? I think that died. And he did for once raise them up. Because the perspective of joy should not be given to what is happening on earth. It should be given to the fact that God is faithful no matter what. So your joy should not be left to chance. Tell someone my joy should not be left to chance. Your joy should be intentional no matter what. You should be intentional about your joy. Your joy should be self-regulated. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. It should be self-regulated. If you leave your joy to chance, the devil will take chance of it. It should be self-regulated. That's what scripture says. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. You are inside the temptation, but you are counting it joy. Count, the, the, count it all joy means uh, accept it as a joyful thing. Consider it a joyful thing. In the book of Acts chapter 13, <laughs> they beat the apostles, blue black. Blue black. They didn't go back to God. And and told him that, we have been preaching your word. Look at my body. Fine boy, Malato. You know what I'm saying? Then he go back to and said, I, I prayed in tongues all night for this evangelism. Only for me to get out and I was beating blue black. Can't you release your angels? They didn't say so. Because sometimes, uh, they say, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. One brother, you know, winked at me. And all of a sudden, he didn't come true. And I've been praying. I've been praying. They, they didn't say that. I won't preach the gospel. They took them, they beat them blue black. Do you know blue black? You know the kind of beating that when you greet your wife, when you get home, your wife will be waiting for her husband. She said, only I'm here. You said, no, it can't be you. That's blue black. And scripture says, they counted it all joy. They went back home rejoicing. Acts chapter 13 verse 25. Let me show you very Something very quickly. Act 13. Because this thing is now. Act chapter. No, sorry. Because these people want to. Act chapter 13. Can somebody help me look for the scripture? It's in Act 13. Just scroll down Act 13, you will see it. I'm very sure it's in Act 13. When they, they beat them so much that by the time they were back, they were so they were so up in their sorrow they were joy, that they said they counted us worthy of the gospel of Christ. Is someone hearing me here? So what is joy? Very quickly here, he said joy is the deep rooted inspired expression of God's law. 
is the deep-rooted, inspired expression of God's law. That is joy. Is someone hearing me here? Joy is to count God faithful despite everything. Counting that God is faithful even in what you are going through. Did you get what I'm saying here? And joy is something that you start within yourself. Now let's go to the book of Psalm 103 verse 1. Psalm 103 verse 1. You will see what uh, scripture says. Scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul. If you find NLT version, you can go there. NLT version says, bless the Lord, I tell myself. Did you get what I'm saying here? Bless the Lord. He, 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 you didn't leave that aspect of blessing the Lord to another person. You didn't leave it to the situation. I will face the situation. Scripture says, bless the Lord, I tell myself. I sit down and tell myself that in this situation, bless the Lord. Because sometimes you need to have a meeting with yourself. To understand the fact that nobody will create joy for you. You have to create your joy yourself. You have to be intentional about your He said, bless the Lord, I tell myself. So the first thing you must understand is the fact that joy is a commandment. Joy is a commandment. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Joy is a commandment. You must tell yourself that you should be full of joy. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Very quickly. DJ, you have to be fast. I have many things to judge. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Then you go to Psalm chapter 5 verse 11. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Psalm chapter 5 verse 11. Joy is a commandment. God commands us to be joyful. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. God commands us. He said, always be full of joy in the Lord. He said, I say it again, rejoice. He said, rejoice. No, just leave it. Don't rush the Bible. Leave it. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Now, as a matter of fact, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a commandment for the New Testament believer. If you read it from verse 12. Commandment for, that's where it says, pray without ceasing, and all those things. And, and in verse 16, scripture says, rejoice evermore. Evermore rejoice. The way it tells you to be prayerful in all season, it tells you to rejoice in all season. Did you get what I'm saying here? When you get the money, rejoice. When you didn't get the money, rejoice. When the husband shows up, rejoice. When the husband doesn't show up, rejoice. Your joy should not be tied to your wife or your husband. Your joy should be tied to the goodness of God no matter what. Hallelujah. Rejoice. This is the New Testament believer. Rejoice. Look at everything and just laugh about it. <laughs> Scripture says that he that seated in heaven shall laugh. He said, why are they hating rich? Why are they plotting a vain thing? Do you know what it means to see your colleagues plotting vain things? To see them talking about you? To see them looking about and saying, I will pull you down. And scripture says that he that seated in heaven shall laugh. When the devil was going around submitting his resume that I'm going to take over the, uh, the kingdom. I'm going to be as high as God. I'm going to be this. You know what God was doing? Hallelujah. He was laughing. He was why the, the, the devil was going around telling people that one day I'm going to overthrow God. One day I'm going to be at the throne room. One day he said, "You, if you follow me, I will make you the commander of the battalion." If you follow, and, and somewhere in the corridor of heaven, God was sitting down looking at the plot. And Scripture says, "He that seated in heaven shall laugh." He was laughing at them. He laughed so much that the gift for comedy came out. That's where people got comedy from. I believe so. That's my version. But he that seated in heaven shall laugh. Hallelujah. All I planned this year didn't work out. 
Some of the things didn't work out. But what do I do? I rejoice in the Lord. I rejoice in the Lord. Because I, I don't know what his plan is, but I rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. I rejoice in the Lord. And I was looking for a baby. Year one, year two, year three didn't come. Year four didn't come. But somewhere in the corridor of heaven, God was waiting so that the calculation of the coming of Jesus can be precise. If he had released it a particular year, he would have missed the prophet. God was waiting. So God was laughing in heaven. If I release it in my time. Listen, what would you do when your answer comes? Do it now. Do it now. Because your joy is your expression of faith in God. And his timing is accurate. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Your joy is the expression of your faith in God. And that is timing are accurate. If the boy came before time, he would have missed the calculation of the coming of Jesus. So there had to be a bit of delay so that the time can be accurate. Listen to me. I've come to tell you that even the devil expects you to cry. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. I say always. When you are in the dungeon, rejoice. When you are yaya, kopa kaskata, rejoice, laugh at the enemy. If you know, the scripture says, if they had known, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. When they were beating Jesus, there was laughter in heaven. You thought that they were sad in heaven, but there was laughter. He said, beat him the more. Benga is going to be saved. Beat him the more. Liar is going to be taken out. Beat him the more. Balaji is going to be saved. Why? Rejoice. I know so many people have testimony this year but one of my testimony is the fact that it didn't work but yet I rejoice I planned it like this it didn't work but I rejoice 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 in the Lord sometimes you need to carry a chair in your house sit down and just keep laughing <laughs> and keep laughing keep laughing all of a sudden in the realm of the spirit the devil are confused what is exactly happening here we expect her to be crying but she is laughing scripture says rejoice in the Lord every day rejoice he walks I rejoice he didn't walk I rejoice they sent me out I rejoice they accepted me I rejoice Rejoice. Re Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice. I want to give somebody 30 seconds. Stand on your feet. Go around your chair. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. I know it didn't work. Rejoice. I know it works. Rejoice. Even you can rejoice in tongues. Escota. Scripture said the kingdom of our God is not in meat and in drink. It's in joy, in love, and in joy in the Holy Ghost. Power. Love, joy in the Holy Ghost. Rejoice! And I say, Rejoice! 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 You are too faithful to fail me. Rejoice! You are too faithful to disappoint me. Rejoice! Not on my tongue you will fail. Rejoice. Rejoice. I say rejoice. Believe I rejoice. I know they pray for the person she died. But rejoice. The person is in a better place. Rejoice. The pain is no more. Rejoice. You pray for the job. He didn't come. Rejoice. You pray for the person. He didn't get healed. Rejoice. Ah, the quarter is cut out. This is the foolishness of the gospel. That brings power to our situation. I know it doesn't look like you should rejoice. Ah. I rejoice. I rejoice in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Ah, thank you, Lord. Let's run this one. Let's have our seat. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> oh, Yananamaka. We are not ordinary people. We are not. We are not. When the devil expects us to be crying, we are not ordinary people. 
we keep laughing. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. The next time somebody is plotting against you, just look at them and keep laughing. <laughs> Not knowing that as they are plotting it, they are plotting your promotion. Why? Because they rejoice. They thought they succeeded by sending you out of the company, but they didn't know that you are coming with a bank. Rejoice in the Lord. My brother, rejoice. Oh, last Pompele. Woo! Joy renews your strength and eliminates depression. You can't be full of joy and be depressed. It's not possible. The two cannot work together. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10. Very quickly here. Isaiah 35 verse 10. You can't be full of joy and be depressed. Lock up your door. Keep dancing. Lock up your door, keep dancing. It didn't work. Uh, though I said, the song says, uh, 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 it never stops, it never stops working. Uh, uh, something like that, something like that. Uh, though I didn't see him, he keeps working. He uh, keeps working, he keeps working. He uh, keeps working, he keeps working. Uh, because you will laugh yourself inside it. You will laugh yourself. Uh, the angel appeared to, uh, to, 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 to uh, what was it? Uh, Oh, he appeared to, I mean, was it Sarah? Yes, Abraham. He said, your wife will give birth to a son according to the time of life next year. Scripture says that at the back of the tent, she was laughing. That laugh was, was, was trying to reject and reproach what the prophet said. But, but God didn't take that as an offense. God now gave her a son that means laughter. Did you get what I'm saying here? God now gave her Isaac, mean promise and laughter. Because she was laughing, but God didn't take it as an offense. He still looked at the laughter and said, I will make that laughter real. I will make that laughter real. I will make the laughter real. When the devil touch you, should be crying, you should be laughing. Because somewhere in the corridor of heaven, it can make the laughter real. I take Kosh Kata. I said, it can make the laughter real. Surely they shall gather, but they that gather against us shall scatter for our sake. As they gather and they are plotting vain things, we keep laughing, we keep laughing, we keep laughing. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10, very quickly. Joy renews your strength. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. I'm the ransom of the Lord. And come to Zion with song. An everlasting joy upon their head. They shall obtain joy. Did you get what I'm saying? Obtain joy. The word obtain means you will seize it. And you know what When you catch yourself entering into depression, then you will start the machine of joy. All of it, you will catch. Ah, this is depression. You will but I'm, I'm going to tell you how to enter it. As scripture says, and sorrow and sign shall do what? Flee away. Flee away. Another back of fire. Oh, it focuses your attention on God. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have time. Ooh, glory. But let me say this. I will leave. My God. Joy changes the equation or the odd equation of life. Let me give you one secret. Psalm chapter 126. Psalm 126 verse 5. Then we'll now go to Psalm chapter 35. Thank you, Lord. Psalm chapter 126 verse 5. And Psalm chapter 30 verse 5. Very quickly. DJ, you have to be very fast. Thank you, Jesus. Joy changes the odd equation of life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the DJ... Aside to punish me now. All right. Now, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Now, I'm going to I'm going to explain to you the understanding of the scripture. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Very quickly here. Yeah. He that goeth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his shift with him. Now, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. Then I will explain everything because it says almost the same thing. Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. Those that go forth, they will come back rejoicing there. Thank you, Lord. 
Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. You have to be quick. Thank you, Lord. But his anger endured for a moment, and in his faith for his life, weeping may endure for the night, but joy come in the morning. Now, when I was reading this scripture years ago, and I usually quote, now this is a personal revelation to me. Personal revelation. And I believe that it's whatever we have caught in God, we can, we can, we can give out. Now, scripture says that joy, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So I was reading it, and the Holy Spirit told me, he said, now, read it again. He said, weeping may endure for the night, but to bring the morning to come is joy. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's why it says that in his favor is life. Did you get what I'm saying here? He said, in his joy is morning. Which means that weeping may endure for the night, but what brings the morning out is the fact that you rejoice. Did you get what I'm saying here? Now, let me explain what that means. What that means is when you see the night approaching, there is a joy inside of you that the morning is coming out. Which means when you see a particular situation of life, what you need to do is the fact that in that situation, you begin to practice joy. Because your, 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 your situations of life should not be seen in your stress. You should be seen in your joy. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. What you are going through should not be seen in your worry. It should be seen in your joy. Which means the amount of joy we see you that, come, that comes out of you in that season of life dictates how fast the money will come. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That is why many people stay back in their night season. They keep mourning and they keep complaining. And the more you mourn in the night, the night elongate. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. But inside that night, there is a principle to turn it into morning. Because in the scripture, you dictate the timing of your life. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. Which means that night and morning in the, in the realm of the spirit is what you dictate, not what is calculated. You dictate when it's night, you dictate when it's morning. The seasons of your life are dictated according to the light that comes to your spirit. And one of the lights that comes to your spirit is the fact that when you're in that night season, what you enter into is joy. So scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but what brings the morning is the joy. Jesus is called the day star, the morning bearer. And all through the dark ages, the dark ages stayed until one day the angels announced to the shepherd, joy to the world. Why? Because Jesus showed up. According to the timing of the kingdom, it was when Jesus came that joy came. So according to the timing of your life, it is when you bring forth the joy of Christ that the morning shows up. So you don't wait for joy or the morning to come. You make sure that the joy starts in your spirit. Then your morning will show up. Is someone hearing me here? Your morning will show up. So how do you stay joyful? Speak to yourself. Tell someone, speak to yourself. Ah yeah, time is going. If you look at the book of Joshua chapter 6, scripture made mention of the walls of Jericho. And the mystery that brought down the walls of Jericho was the mystery of a shout. Listen to me, shout is not meant for small kids. Shout is not a protocol of club. Shout is not a protocol of the people that are drunk with, 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 with red label and black label. Shout is a scriptural reference that makes sure that a believer switch from morning to morning. Is someone hearing me here? That a believer switch from sorrow. is a shout unto the Lord. Oh, ye yes. Scripture even says in the book of Galatians or in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1, he said, oh, sink, oh, barren shout for joy how can a barren woman be shouting I don't know something about shouting I don't know much about what the science will say but this is what the kingdom says it's an all sink all barren whether you're barren on job barren in life barren on the business it's a shout for joy which means that it's something about shouting listen to me when you are from your sleep you are trying to cry and you are trying to weep scripture said remember this sermon it's a shout out for joy. You will come out of your bed and start shouting. They say, what's happened? Shouting is a spiritual principle. It's not for club, it's for us. Take a bye. Scripture says, make a joyful sound. A joyful sound or a joyful noise. Shouting was what made the people realize that people 
people were baptized in the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came, they were not saying Kurate, Samata, Uriti, Nemata. Nobody would have known about Christianity. They were not saying Bayo, Shoshu, Shoshu, Scripture said they heard a loud sound. They said there are drunk guys there. Why? Because when joy comes, shouting follows. All of a sudden, you look at the situation around you. You scream for joy. Shire. You shout. I'm teaching you spiritual principle. This is not about you closer. It's a spiritual code. Shout. Look at the eye. Shout. 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 I give you 30 seconds. Shout. This is a spiritual code. Shout. Look at your job. Shout. Sing up and make a joyful noise. Sing up and make a joyful noise. Shout to the Lord. All you people, make a voice of triumph. Shout. I will shout unto the Lord and make a noise for praise. I will shout. My shout. Scripture says in that day, and it shall come with a loud shout. Joy come. With a loud shout, how do you stay joyful? With a loud shout, joy comes. With a loud shout, shout. Oh, like Kotokosa, we command every depression go, every depression go in your spirit, every depression go, every spirit of depression and oppression in anyone. As you shout, as you shout, I come against that sickness. Let the depression go. Let the sickness leave. Shout. Is a therapy. Ah, 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 That is where we know that believers are gathered. We don't keep quiet. We keep shouting. When they expect you to cry, you shout. Shout unto the Lord. This is a spiritual code. It's not about you just getting overly excited. It's a code in the spirit. That was why I started with a mystery. A mystery in the kingdom is what makes your result predictive. Is someone hearing me here? The next time you're about to enter into depression, find a shouting person and keep shouting. And keep shouting. Some of you, as you shout, miracles that will cause you to shout will happen. This year, before this year rounds up, we stretch forth our hands. We declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus, as you enter into this mystery, we declare a shouting testimony, we declare a shouting miracle, we declare a shouting spiritual life, we declare a shouting Bible study life, a shouting prayer life, a shouting praise life. Right now, come upon your people now, come upon your people now. Let them be shouting all through the year, all through the year, shouting testimony, shouting glory, shouting ayah, shouting promotion. My God, my God, my God. We need to go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We declare that in the name of Jesus, as you have heard this word today, let there be exceeding miracles. Everything left remaining as a goal, as a desire this year. As you have entered into this mystery, I declare in the name of Jesus, within the next couple of hours for this year to come to an end, I stand upon the calling of this ministry. I declare by the supernatural power of God, let there be concluding shouting testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Put those hands together for Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's have our seat in God's presence. Thank you, Lord. It's our time to give our offerings and our tithes. Woo! Glory be to God. We are so blessed. Blessed are we, for we know these things. These things. For we know these things. 
We have four ways by which we give you at Harvesters. You can use a POS at the back of the auditorium. You can write a check payable to Harvesters International Christian Center. Or use the envelopes by your seat pocket. Or you can use the banking details on the screen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As our custom is here in Harvesters, if you're giving your tithe, a one-time offering, a one-time pledge, a Thanksgiving offering, you can rise with me. As we pray this morning, thank you, Lord. As we pray this morning, rise with me. You're giving your tithe, one time offering, a pledge. Hallelujah. And if you're giving your offering, your Sunday offering, you can just raise it with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for out of the abundance of which you've blessed us with. We bring our tithe, our offerings into your house, Holy Father. We ask that you accept it. We ask that strength arises unto us from Zion. And we are the receiver of the rewards to this obedience. Thank you, Supernatural Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have your seat, please. If today is your first time worshiping with us at Harvesters, we are so glad you chose a wonderful Sunday like this to come. It's been a year for us, a fantastic year. We can't begin to count. And it has, at my last count, we must have had um, over 10,000 to 20,000 testimonies, live recorded testimonies, this year alone. I mean, it's been fantastic. It's been awesome. Last week, somebody gave a testimony of how she passed out a fibroid. Hallelujah. And you know, God is in the business of doing miracles. Miracles are the common sense of God. But to the science world, they are just the revealed parts of their knowledge. Is someone hearing me here? And God does common sense every day here. Is someone hearing me here? Praise the Lord. So if you are here for the first time <clears throat> on a Sunday morning, if you're such a person, can you just wave by a show of hands? Wow, hallelujah, hallelujah. Please, you can sit down, just wave your hands. Hallelujah. Please keep waving until you get a card. I have a brother here. I have, I have so many hands. Please, can we just keep clapping for them until you get a card? Ushers, can you help me? I have, I have someone here just at the front row by the instrumentalist. I have someone there. Please, can you keep waving until you get a card? It won't be a bother to you. We just want you to give us your information, and we'll be glad um, to have you. Our pastor will be glad to have you as as, uh, as a family, we'll be glad to be part of your family also. We love you. It's a wonderful time to come to Harvesters. This is the Harvesters you've heard about we, where we change lives and we raise peace setters and it's been from one level of glory to the other. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So um, I guess there's no um, praise. Hallelujah. So, okay. So you can come out as I give the following announcement. Just come out and give your offerings. Hallelujah. Um, we, we have basket by the stage here. We have basket uh, um, on the house over there, you can just give your offering, and as we just close the service, you can rise with me, uh, kindly rise with me, the service um, is coming to an end, kindly rise with me, you can just walk out to give your offerings, uh, the basket are in front, uh, they're on the house also, amen, and as you go back to your seat, just, just give your neighbor a knuckle, and say something wonderful, awesome about your neighbor, um, greet your neighbor, Merry Christmas, um, and this time next uh, week, it will be 26, so Christmas would have passed. And yeah, you can as well extend your chicken and your turkey. Amen. Only God knows why uh, it's only chickens that bear the consequence of this season. I guess it was because it was the only animal that uh, gave an attestation to the fact that uh, Peter denied Jesus. Uh, so uh, that must have been the reason because I'm always wondering why it was chicken. Amen. Along the line, turkey came along the way, but I mean, but chicken was the major thing. Amen. Uh, the next time you want to attest to something, please be careful so that you won't be a monumental, amen, <laughs> example. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Can you just speak words unto yourself? I said, as you go this week, you are favored. As you go this week, um, the shouting part of the scripture now becomes your, your daily portion. You shout every day. You shout for joy. You sing. I'm blessed, I'm favored in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communication of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. In Jesus' name, and surely God's goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And we are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. God bless you. Please do have a fulfilled week.